The average person spends two hours a day simply doing research. And no, this does not mean if you're in school or taking classes. This is just, hey, what's a good school for my child? How do I fix this pipe that's in my home? All of the things that we would classify under hashtag adulting. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Liz Moyer. And if you've been with me before, we talk a lot about AI tools. The thing about it is stuff is changing so quickly and the tools that we used to use have been upgraded. No one's walking around with these large maps anymore, even MapQuest, rest in peace MapQuest. When we think about a typical topic that you want information on, we used to go to Google and now we started to use large language models like ChatGPT, Claude, Gemini. But I really wanna challenge you that when you're looking for information, where you need to start is perplexity. So let's jump in and I'll show you a couple of comparisons. Okay, so here we are, we're gonna go and start with the lovely Google, right? Because a lot of the times when someone would ask a question, you would say, I don't know, Google it. And still people use Google all the time. So when we go into Google, I'm gonna ask it a question. My husband and I, are pregnant and we decided to hardcore nest and we just bought a home. So we'll be moving. And I just asked it, hey, what are the cost affordable movers on the island of Oahu and what should I consider when moving this summer? And now you can see the results. I just wanna note a couple of things immediately with Google is that your first couple ones are always gonna be sponsored. Um, so individuals, companies have paid money to make sure that they're up there. Then you have an AI overview and then You've got Yelp reviews, Reddit, kind of some of those open source, like you're not able to talk to your neighbor, but if you were, this is what they would say. And some companies that have done a great job with their search engine optimization to be able to make it to that front page. There are other companies that are here that potentially might be wonderful, but haven't invested in SEO or search engine optimization. So exact same prompt that I put into a large language model. This one's ChatGPT. And I just say, hey, what is it? It gives me a cool little map, um, pulls a couple of informations, right? Um, and really it's, this kind of still kind of feels Google-ish to me, right? Um, if you look at these companies, these companies have the highest SEO. And then it's got a couple of tips uh, of telling me to like plan for the summer heat. That wasn't exactly what I was looking for, um, but I guess I should, you know, plan ahead and go from there. All right, now we're gonna go to perplexity. And so perplexity, I've done the exact same thing. I have put in that prompt, but what you'll see is that it went through and here are all 20 of the sources that it pulled. It doesn't care about sponsorship. It doesn't care about search and optimization. It just says, what is the information out there? And then it gives me this answer. It pays attention to the fact that I'm looking for cost affordable and gives me information. I will also enjoy that you have the citations where it's pulled the information. So if it said, hey, it's known for budget friendly, well, then that is something that you can then go back and find the source for. And then there is this quick comparison table, which I didn't ask for, but it's helping me to process the information. Think about people. The way that you receive information, the way you receive data really matters. And so if it's all kind of jumbled or um, if it is even just piecemeal, it's hard for you to figure out what do I actually need to do? But I can quickly look at this and go, okay, here's the name. Here's the features, and this is more information on that. And then it gives me some final tips. So it's the blend of Google and your large language model, but it's done a great job of getting rid of all of that extra chaos, all that extra information. In the military, you know, we call this information fog. You just have a hard time being able to sort through it all. Now I'm about to go into some settings that are really important with perplexity. And just like any tool, whether it's perplexity or a large language model, there's always free and then paid for. I recommend starting with free, see how it works, and then determine how much you're gonna use it and what you need it for. As always, if you find this information to be helpful, please like, subscribe, and share with someone else. So if you're starting off with perplexity, the biggest question that people are going to have is, okay, where do I start? I'm used to just going into Google and searching something and then maybe modifying my changes. 
So step number one is that you will always start with perplexity when you're trying to get good information, period, dot. Stop using Google. We'll use a different example and just say something like, I am considering the pros and cons of childcare options like nannies, sorry for my spelling, it doesn't care anyway, au pairs, we're definitely not gonna spell that right, au pairs, um, child development centers, and other options. I am looking specifically, I guess, for research that talks about child development. Cause you know, it's like, we're about to have a child and you like, you think about these things and you're going, do they need socialization right away? What's the importance of it? So let's go from there. Your second step when you use perplexity is to identify two to three sources that you really want to deep dive. So as an example, I'm going to look at the sources and I'm going to go, Oh, uh, to Liz, it's really important to me to understand the impact of pediatric daycare on child development. So I'm going to further research and read to get an understanding of. And then I may also go, hmm, I really like Berkeley's research and this is a great document I can go in and look at. Step three, anytime you're using perplexity, is once again to go down to the bottom and look at the related questions. Sit there and go, have I thought about these questions and which ones do I want answered? Because the truth is, is that when we're trying to make an info or an informed decision, you need information. Um, sometimes we look back at a decision and go, oh man, if I had known that, if I had known that there was an extra fee, if I had known that this is how much it would actually, the time it would take, maybe I would do something differently. And what we're trying to do is one, speed up the process to get rid of all of the noise of uh, people who've done sponsorship or paid for things or SEO. And three, just be able to ensure that when you do make that decision, you feel confident about it. Now, step four is that you can use what's called deep research mode when this is something that's really, really important. So maybe you are like having a gluten-free type of diet. Well, it might not be super important for you to jump in and say, let's do deep research. But if this is something where it's important to you, maybe you are in a course and you want to write a really great paper or you have a presentation for work and you want to make sure that you have looked at all of the current research that's on that topic, use deep research. So when you click down here, you can see the search variables, which we'll go through in just a second the deep research, and then an ability to create projects for down here. Of course, on the right-hand side, you can choose what model you want to use. Um, you can attach files, and I love this, you can talk to it as well too. So for a lot of people, sometimes we're just not giving the AI tool enough information. They want these prompts to be really long. A three to five minute of you speaking is really going to give it enough context, but that's a lot of typing. So this is a really cool tool just to click on it and it'll actually hear you and be able to then get all the context that you need. Um, so deep research, we were talking about step four. If I click on deep research, then it's going to take its time. It's going to really scrub the information. So as an example, and I'm gonna let this work right now, when we are looking at that deep research, um, one of the things is it's a very kind of menial task to find a good mover. But if you're a first time home buyer, which I am, uh, my husband has bought before, um, I just wanna make sure I know what to consider when we're in the buying process and under contract because um, I've heard horror stories of things going wrong and this is the biggest purchase I've ever made in my life and it's in Hawaii so it's even more expensive and what we have to do is kind of take that step back and go hmm what am I not thinking about what am I not considering because there's so many things else that are going on in my life. I'm changing jobs. My husband's changing jobs. He's out of town. What else? Uh, I'm pregnant. All of these things that can just really create the ability for us to not always get the information we need to make that good decision. So you can see it took a little bit longer, um, but the sources are 49. So it's gone into that deep research mode. It's pulled all the information. 
And I really like this. So critical inspections, I'm actually going to my inspection after this today. So wish me luck. I can copy paste this, just put it in my phone and go, uh, what questions do I need to ask? How do I need to be prepared for this? I mentioned earlier that you can change the model. So the way that it's pulling this information is using a large language model, but perplexity is more than that. And so um, you can see that it goes through um, sonar, which is like fastest model. You're looking for a really quick answer, but without all of the other um, sponsorship and SEO. Pod 4.0 for Sonnet, GPT 4.1, Gemini. Gemini does a great job of just crushing a lot of information. We've got um, Grok and you've got different reasonings too. Um, so the question you really have to ask yourself is, are you okay with losing two hours a day to research? And personally, I'm not. So I love perplexity. I do want to leave you with one really good tip. When you first open up perplexity, on the bottom right, you see the little globe and you can set the sources for search. Super important because right now it's only pulling from the web. And so if I want to pull from the web or from academic or from social or finance, I want to click those. And then I'm going to get a more comprehensive answer. I'm going to take the same prompt that I initially did, which was like, we're moving, right? It's going to take longer. 100% going to take longer. But it's not only going to search the web, but it's going to look for finance information. It's going to see, man, has anyone done some type of research study on the effects of moving in the summer and how it endures and all these other variables? So for those of you that are actually doing schoolwork, uh, you're in a course, you're, you know, you're got to make sure that you haven't just pulled from a blog and said, yep, this is what child development looks like, or this is the effects of moving on someone, then please, please, please hit the little globe and click to make sure you're not just pulling from the web. So the results are still generating, but you can see I now have 85 resources. And same thing, I can click on those resources and it'll tell me where they got this information from. And it's going to be a mixture of websites, but there also is some government archives. <clears throat> now I don't get any endorsement for any of the AI tools that I talk about. And I want you to remember that the tool is not the point. You have to be open to changing the way that you do stuff, the way that you research, the way that you think, the way that you gather information. I'd love for you to share one research task that is kind of eating your lunch or something that you're working on. Put it in the comments and um, please like and subscribe.